Hi, somebody contacted me recently. They sent me a message saying that they'd found one of my pencil cases or cosmetic bags, I think on my blog. And they wanted to know if there was a video on how to make them. And I actually thought there was. I thought I'd done a video on how to make this box style bag. But looking back through all the videos, I can't find one. So I thought today I'd show you how to make this design. It's simple to do. And once you know how to make it, you can make them in any size. So you can make them taller, bigger, smaller, whatever you want, really. The basic principle is all the same. It's just the size of fabric that you start off with. So these two were made well over a year ago i think from memory um they are on my blog i know i blogged about them and that's why i thought i'd done a video but it it would appear i've, I've never actually created a video to show you how to make them so they've got a zip fastening they're lined they can be used you know for a pencil case or a makeup bag these two are pencil cases and the designs on these two are just inbuilt designs from the scan and cut machine. So this is an inbuilt pattern that I stitched on. This is felt, I cut it using um, heat and bond, ironed it on and then stitched it in place before I sewed up the bag. And this is another one, again, felt, done the same way with the scan and cut and heat and bond on the back. And this is an inbuilt design as well. I've also made them a similar depth but longer. Um, I did a, a knitting needle bag for a, somebody, for a friend one time as a gift. Same design and I've also made them smaller and higher for to put cosmetics and makeup in. So I'm going to show you how to do them. I'll try and insert photos into the video showing past projects that I've done to give you an idea of how they look in different fabrics etc. But they're really simple to do. Basically, you need two pieces of fabric, an outer fabric and an inner fabric. And that can be anything of your choice. These two are both just lined with um, natural unbleached calico, but you could use a white proof lining. I've done that in the past. It's entirely up to you. Today, I'm going to use this pale blue, which is like an upholstery weight fabric and a blue cotton polka dot, which is like a, a quilt, quilt weight fabric. These two pieces of fabric are cut at 13 inches wide by 14 inches high. You need a zip, obviously, that's bigger than your width. So this is 13 inches. This zip's about 21. I actually normally use um, zip on a roll when I'm, I, I use a lot of that but I just so happen to have um, a bunch of zips in varying colours and lengths and styles this is a plastic teeth tooth one um, and it's far too big but I prefer to use a bigger zip when making things like this because you can keep the zipper pulls out of the way as you'll see when I'm sewing so you need a zip and <clears throat> you don't necessarily need to put a tab on the end but if I remember, I tried to put one in. So you need a bit of ribbon just for a pull tab. These have got two, but they don't really need it. So I'm going to get the machine out and show you how to make this simple bag. Right, to get started, what you need to do, you need to get your two pieces of fabric, whatever size you're using, and you put them wrong sides together. I know that's different than we normally do when we're sewing, but for this pattern this is how you do it so wrong sides together and basically you want to sew these two pieces of fabrics together all around the outside edge now if you've not got a serger or an overlocker you can use a zigzag stitch and go all the way around the four sides or if you've not got that facility on your machine, if you've got pinking shears, if you cut this shape out originally with pinking shears, that would stop the edges from fraying. It's just because we're doing it this way and it's to give your 
finished bag, a, a neat a neat finish inside. That's all I'm trying to say, really. So for speed, I'm going to use the serger. But as I say, you could use a zigzag stitch all the way around or cut it with pinking shears. Okay, so that's one side done. I'm going to do the other three sides and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so I've sewn this on all four sides now. Hoping you can see this surged it. This is going to be my, ins my inside and this is going to be the outside. So decide which is your outside fabric and have that facing up. And then what you want to do next is get your zip and put your zip right side down so basically you've got the two right sides together the right side of the zip and the right side of the fabric and you can pin it in place if you want you could use a fabric glue stick and put a bit of glue on to hold it in place but basically you're now just going to sew down as close to the teeth as possible so that when you flip it over that will be what you see and I'm hoping that you can see this because we've gone from extreme weathers here. Yesterday was grey, very, very windy and rainy all day. And today is hovering between bright sunshine and grey skies. So, and as I've not done a sewing video for a while, I'm trying to remember which was the best angle to have my camera and everything. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the zipper foot on my machine. I've got just some basic um, cream coloured thread, so a neutral and just going to sew these together. But I'm just going to recap. This is the 13 inch wide side and the height is the 14 inch. So as there's only an inch difference, just double check before you sew your zip on that you're sewing it on to the right width. machine up with the zipper zipper stitch and zipper foot I'm just going to sew all the way along here now There you go. Right, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn this over so that this folds flat on the inside and I'm going to top stitch all the way down just to hold that in place. So I'm just going to have to swap the needle over and I'm making sure that this is folded towards the inside so that it you don't want it going up that way you want it folding down on the inside so that you're going to literally stitch this down to hold it in place you want to kind of pull your fabric a little bit to keep it away from the teeth and you want to line the edge of your zipper foot up with the edge of this top fabric so that you're literally just catching this down okay so that's how we're looking now then keeping the right side of your fabric uppermost we're now going to bring the fabric over so that this top edge lines up with the top edge of the zip and what we want to do here is make sure that the sides line up and then again 
we're just going to sew close to the edge now it's entirely up to you you can either sew it from this side or if it's easier to sew from this side do it that way i think i prefer to sew it so that the zip is looking at me so i'm just going to slide that back under move my needle position over again and sew down here and at this stage it doesn't matter that my zip is completely closed because this is quite wide and i can get my hand in to open it and just cut these threads out of the way okay so that's how we're looking at the moment now we've got to top stitch this down as well so this is where we need to open the zip and this is where having a big zip really helps because you can open the zip just cut that through just got some of my threads caught up here so I'll just clip them out of the way okay so we're going to do the same thing fold this so it lays flat and top stitch as close to the teeth as possible Keeping this folded under to the inside while I'm sewing. thread caught up there from the serger so I'm just going to cut that away that's because I wasn't looking what I was doing okay so that's how it's looking at the moment so now we're going to fasten the zip back up again okay so this is how we look now it's all sewn together what you want to do now you want the wrong side on the outside so as you can see this is the wrong side of the zip that's all the right side and the inside <clears throat> you want to fold it kind of in half now so that instead of being that way how we sewed it you want to bring the zip so it's into the middle now you can measure this if you want to be exactly precise or you can just literally eyeball it well that's effectively how we want it to look what we're going to do now is put the box corners in <clears throat> so I'm using a template that I've cut with the scan and cut which is a one and a half inch square and I've cut a few of these and I just keep them all on a book ring I've got various templates in different sizes and shapes and things for for projects and I just keep them all on there if you can see my arms not in the way so we're going to use the one and a half inch square and I'm just going to use an air erasable pen and you want to put this in the corner with the square lined up to this sewn edge that you did at the, right at the beginning so this like zigzag or overlock or whatever it is not to the outside edge to the actual inside edge and you're just going to mark the the square on all four corners so if you can see what i'm doing i'm lining it up to the bottom and up to there and i'm just going to draw around it
Not sure how much ink is left in this pen, but should be enough to do this project, hopefully. <clears throat> and this is what's going to make your box corners. And we're going to cut those four out. Just put a couple of these clover clips just to keep it from shifting while I cut. You could pin it. You don't have to do this. It's entirely up to you. And then basically we're just going to cut all these four away. So that's how we're looking now with the four corners cut out. And what we're going to do, we're going to sew across these two short sides. So we're going to sew a seam across here and a seam across here just with a regular foot and a regular stitch in just the regular position on your presser foot. But before we do that, you've got to open your zip here. So just open the zip to about halfway down. Again, if you want to, you can put clips on this to hold it or pin it. It's entirely up to you. But I must stress, you must open your zip here. If you don't, you're going to struggle to get inside it. And at this point, this is where you can put your ribbon pull if you want. I've got a piece of ribbon here that's about six inches long. It's far too big, really. But basically, what you want to do is fold it in half. Look which end your zipper will be closed at. And I think that's the end I would put the ribbon in. So at the end where your zip would be closed. So this zip would close this end. So this is where I would insert this. You want to slide this in with the fold going inwards and the open edges on the outside. So if I just take these clips off for a minute, put it in there. I leave some hanging out so I can see it. Try and do it fairly centrally and you can put a clip on it to hold it temporarily for a minute or so and then just clip this back up just until you get this into the machine and you can see what you're doing really so move this out of the way this is the, the these are the corners i cut out bring the machine back in i'm going to sew this end with the ribbon in first because I want to try and get this under the presser foot to hold everything down. I'm going to hold the ribbon in place with my fingers and just sew straight across. And at this point here, I'm going to go backwards and forwards a few times at the beginning and at the end and across where the zip is. Just take your time when you're going over the zip. Okay, I can take those clips off now. Turn it round and do the same on the opposite end. Now this is where you can cut the zip off now nice and flush so just chop it off and the same here and because we've left this open we know that we're going to be able to get into here when we need to in a minute so again you can see i've got the bits of ribbon stuck out and i've got the end of the zip just going to cut right across and cut it all away and any stray threads we've got Okay, so that's how we're looking so far. Now we're going to box out the corners, which basically means we're going to open up the fabric and we're going to keep in this seam now in the middle of here. <clears throat> we're just going to sew these together. Might be easier if you see it this way. It's a little bit fiddly but it can be done. So 
So I'm going to pull the fabric <clears throat> and I'm just going to sew straight across there. Doesn't matter which side you sew from, it's entirely up to you. And we're going to do that on all four corners. So we're going to open this up and pull it tight and sew across and then do the same on this side. And if you sew with the seam going that way on this side, on its opposite side, keep the seam in the same direction so it sits nice and flat for you. Just going to try and do this quickly. And again, I'm just using my regular foot now and I'm using the edge of the fabric as my guide. So my needle is in the middle position. I've just got a regular straight stitch and I'm going to go backwards and forwards at the beginning and at the end. You see how that looks. We're going to tidy this up in a few minutes, so don't don't worry about how it looks at the moment. Just going to do exactly the same on the opposite side, making sure that this seam comes in this direction. Again, I'm just going to trim off any bits of fabric and do exactly the same on the opposite corner. So open it up. I like to do it with the seam facing me. So open it up, get a nice straight line and start sewing. And that's your four seam sewn. Now again, if you've not got a serger, what I would do here is just trim these up so that these are level. You might, you might find that they're, you know, a couple of millimetres off and then zigzag that edge. I'm going to overlock mine for speed and I didn't actually need to do this sew line because I'm overlocking, but I wanted to show you if you were just using a regular sewing machine and no serger, this would be how you will do it. And I have to say, if anybody's looking for a serger, this is the best serger I've ever owned. I've only owned two. Um, my previous one was a Husqvarna and it was quite a sturdy, good machine. But, oh, it was a devil of a machine if the thread broke. This one's got the air threading technology. Quite expensive. And for somebody like me who is just a hobby sewer, it's a you know an expensive piece of kit. But it's the best money I've ever spent. So this is it really now. You can see we've got all the seems nicely sewn you can tie these off but for the speed on the video i'm just going to leave them for now i'm going to put my hand inside and open the zip and i'm going to turn it inside out and hopefully if i've sewn it properly and i could see what i was doing we're going to have a nice boxed makeup bag or pencil case whatever you want to put in it really There's our ribbon. Zip this up. And there it is. Fabulous, what do you think? So you've got the pull on the end to hold on to for when you want to open the zip. The zip opens right down to the other side, so it's quite a capacious bag. It's fully lined, all beautifully finished inside. 
if you wanted to you could have added you know a pattern or a design or something on the front before you sewed the sides up but I wanted to keep this one flat so what do you think beautiful box corners the finished size of this to give you an idea which is wide so it's a good size bag and obviously as I said at the beginning you can make these shallower taller wider you know whatever you like I will try and put in some photos into the video to show you previous ones I've made and you can make them in anything I've made them in oil cloth which is a kind of laminated fabric you know that's like fabric but it's got like a a clear lamination on the top if you use something like that you don't even need to line them I've made them where I've used like a white proof lining inside so the kind of thing that you get you know for making shower curtains that kind of fabric anything you want really it's entirely up to you but look how beautiful and neat the boxed design is on these so I hope you found that helpful please do like the video if you like my videos please do subscribe it does help and if you have the opportunity to share them share them with your friends and I look forward to seeing you in the next video thank you